Well, hello, good morning. Welcome back to the Alaska Sea Life Center for another virtual visit live from the Alaska Sea Life Center. And we, we are joined this morning uh, not only by Pilot back behind me, but by Taylor. Uh, and so you will see Pilot cruising around if he comes and makes goofy faces back behind us. Just try to ignore him. You know, you don't reinforce that. Um, <laughs> he loves to kind of clown at the window, so we're not sure what he's going to do this morning. But uh, Taylor and I are in front of our stellar sea lion habitat downstairs at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And right now, Pilot is the sea lion out on Hab. He is our big stellar sea lion bull. Uh, he's our, our oldest male. And so we're actually going to take a closer look at him today as part of our virtual visit. But first, I, of course, want to thank our sponsors for these programs, and that's Royal Caribbean Group. So they have made this program available to be streamed free online for anyone out there who wants to just you know, take a little virtual visit to the Sea Life Center. And if you were here this morning, you would have, of course, seen our sunrise, which is not much of a sunrise today, honestly. Um, now, I was expecting this to be a, kind of a, a, an important sunrise. Uh, because I believe today would have been the first day that the sun was actually already above the mountains when I started this recording. So this goes from about 8.30 in the morning to 10.30 in the morning. And early, just earlier this week, the sun popped up over those mountains at like 8.31. So I was sure that today would be the day um, that we already had the sun up for our sunrise clip. But it looks like we get another opportunity here. Uh, thanks to our, it's kind of snowy. Towards the end, you see a little bit of snow come in there. Um, but it's still nice weather. It's actually it's getting pretty warm here uh, in Alaska. Uh, and the building is warm this time of year because we've still got heat on, but more guests are showing up, more folks are moving around, and it gets pretty toasty. So as I mentioned today, we are going to be talking about our stellar sea lion. Now, if you tuned in last week, uh, or you've kind of been working your way through our playlist, then you know we talked about our seals, or a couple of our seals, uh, and their scat. We've been kind of like on this lab work kick where we've been looking at the work that is done in our central lab here, our main laboratory. Uh, so last week we were looking at scat samples from these seals. Uh, and this week we actually sent Taylor uh, to take a look at another lab procedure. So what are we looking at today? Yeah, so today we will be looking at blood. So it could be kind of gross. Um, you're going to see a little bit of a live footage of us getting some blood from Pilot, our stellar sea lion behind us. But it's a very, very cool process. We go through the whole entire, all of the steps going from the blood draw itself, whereas it's really cool because they have to heat the concrete before oh. so that he, like, so when he puts his little flippers out, it's nice and warm and, like, gets that <laughs> blood flowing. So you're going to see all of those um, different steps, and then we head to the lab with Jess, okay. um, who I believe you've all met before, perhaps on another episode so, yeah. previously. Um, she's great to work with, and she goes through all of the different steps, how we analyze the blood, and all of the different, I mean, it was quite the, I didn't think it was going to take that long, but I was in there for probably two hours, so major kudos to those oh. um, who run blood. It's crazy. Very it, intensive process. I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be cool to see. I wasn't there for a lot of this, so um, we're going to start that clip up. But remember, if you have any questions, because I think this is kind of one of our longer clips uninterrupted, if you have any questions throughout this, go ahead and type that in our chat, and we'll get to that towards the end. Uh, or you can text us with that number that we ran there at the beginning. Uh, if you're watching and we're not live anymore, you can still leave us a comment if you have a question, uh, or email us at asktuffy, that's A-S-K-T-U-F-F-Y, at alaskasealife.org. So let's get started with our clip today. Today is an annual blood draw for Pilot, our male stellar sea lion. Here you see one of our marine mammal trainers, Jamie, having Pilot work up a bit of a sweat and get his blood pumping for his blood draw. Jamie uses a hand signal and voice command to instruct Pilot to present his rear flippers, which as you can tell, he knows very well. Jamie calms Pilot by giving him continuous reassurance that he is performing the behavior correctly throughout his whole blood draw. Nice job, Pilot. You got this, good boy. Jess is a veterinary assistant here at the Alaska Sea Life Center and is the one performing his blood draw. She uses these hot water bottles to warm up the area to encourage blood flow and cleans the area thoroughly as sea lions have this sort of oil on their flippers. Good job, pilot. Good weight. Nice job, pilot. Good job, pilot. Very nice. 
Good job, just bud. Just one syringe, right? Yep. Good job, buddy. All right. We're at about four mils this. of 10, so we're almost there. Nice job. Good we're job, halfway pilot. there. Good boy. You're doing good. Nice job. Almost there, buddy. Good job. We're at eight mils. Nice, All right, pilot. Jess, I'm going to detach from All the right. butterfly and let you take the butterfly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove my needle. I'm going to apply pressure there. Needle is still alive. And apply dry gauze. Remove this. Good job, buddy. Go ahead okay. And move this. Thank you. Good. Good boy. Oh good job, pilot. Yes. Good. Good job, pilot. Good boy. Good job, buddy. We got it. Yeah. yeah. She successfully drew a vial of blood which was the amount she needed to run it in the lab, which is where we are heading next. Pilot did a great job today. So today we have some blood that we're gonna analyze. Um, we were able to collect that off of Pilot. This is part of his yearly exam, and so we're just gonna see what his blood levels are at and if he's still in good health. So there's an anticoagulant agent in here. For this specific tube, it is potassium EDTA. And typically when we collect blood, we will use what we call the lavender top tube and also our red top tubes, um, which we will spin down to collect serum off of this one and then run that through the machine to get some different chemistry values of his blood. So we have a microhematocrit tube so this is going to tell us the packed cell volume, and we can also use this to get the total protein in his blood. So we make these small little blood tubes up, and then we'll centrifuge them down, and it'll separate really nice and neat. And then from that, we're able to get the values we need. We're gonna make some blood slides and we'll do that using the whole blood. Making the blood slide is a very, very tedious process. Watch Jess as she puts two tiny drops of blood from the whole blood sample and smears them along the glass microscope slides, making a feathered edge on the blood slides. So this one I'm more pleased with. We're looking for this nice, feathered edge. It's a very faint kind of rainbow edge to it. Um, and that's actually where we're going to be reading our slide. So now we're able to send it through our ProSight machine. Our ProSight machine is one of our um, blood analyzers. It gives us specific values. Um, for this one, it's reading our whole blood. So it's going to give us our estimated white blood count. And it's also going to differentiate what our blood uh, white blood cells are and give us a uh, numerical value to each of those. And it also is going to give us a few other values as well. So we always want to invert or thoroughly mix our sample. We place it in here after it's been thoroughly mixed. Send it back in and press start. And then we can kind of monitor the progress as it's going through. So we'll go ahead and spin down our other tube as well. All right, those are pretty well balanced there. And go ahead and spin them down. Make sure that they go right across from each other speed up and once it's up to speed, it'll spin down for 10 minutes. Okay, so we got our initial numbers. So we're gonna do a differential blood slide reading. Um, so we've made our blood slides already. We're going to stain them and then we're gonna pop them on the microscope 
and get a count of the white blood cells and see how many of each, num each type of cell we have out of 100 and then have it as a ratio or percentage. Hematocrit tells us a couple values. It tells us our packed cell volume, so essentially all the once it's spun down, all the red blood cells get pulled down to the bottom, and that's the number that we are reading at. We can also get our buffy coat layer off there, and also, since this is whole blood, when it's spun down on top, so of the three layers, we will have plasma up here. We have our hematocrit tube spread into our three different parts our red blood cells, our buffy coat layer, which is very faint, and then we have our plasma here, which is what we want to take the reading off of for our total protein. And to do that, I'm going to break this above the buffy coat layer, and then put that broken tip into here, and then I will squeeze that onto our refractometer, which will give us our reading. Now, our blood slide should be dried enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain this. Okay, so we have our stain, we will have our buffer, and then we'll have a rinse. And so these are all on specific times or intervals so that our slide will sit in here for about a minute um, and that will stain the various cells Then put it in our buffer and then we will rinse it, and then we're able to throw it on the microscope. And set our timer. Now let's throw the buffer. Gonna give it a nice rinse. So now I'm gonna let this guy dry. So I actually spun this down twice. Um, I added some beads. These are like some centrifuge beads. And so you can kind of see that faint, almost blubbery kind of thing that's fibrogen. And so those beads help pull that out of our serum. So we have a nice, clean um, liquid to work with. So now we're gonna run our chemistry and we do that on our catalyst. And it'll essentially take our sample and put a drop of our sample on each of these slides or clips. And that will give us uh, different readings for these chemistry values. So our sample cup has some lines on there that tell us how much of our sample that we need. That should be plenty. And that's all we need to run our chemistry. So all of our clips are loaded. We have sufficient amount of pipettes. Our sample is in here. In we go, and yeah, now it'll do its thing. And that's it loading all the slides. So in 19 minutes, we will have our results. We'll see if our slide is just about dry. Yeah, that looks like it's good to go. So it's stained. And now it's ready to be differentiated under the microscope. All right, let's look at some blood slides. So we obviously house some pretty unique critters here. Um, so they may look slightly different from what you would see with like your standard cat or dog um, white blood cells. 
So thankfully our predecessors have created a nice little handy sheet. So there's a nice guide for what to look for. And make sure that we are being consistent amongst our staff and what we are labeling as what. So essentially for scanning the blood slide, I'm going to look at a few different powers of view. I'm going to look at a low power view and just do a general scan of the entire slide to see if there's anything funky about it. So nothing exciting, which is great. Now I'm going to move it to the next power field. So now things are starting to look a little bit clearer. The purple dots are going to be our white blood cells when we get to them. And all this red is the red blood cells, or all this pink, I guess. So we'll do another scan to make sure I don't see anything. And so that feathered edge that I was talking about when I'm making the slide, that's what this area is. So the cells are not that clumped together. They're pretty distinguishable um, for one another. Now I'm going to 40, almost there. So I'm starting to see some platelets in there, which is going to be these various little dots. There's another white blood cell. Okay, so I feel like I'm in a good spot, so I'm going to go ahead and move on up to the next plane of view. We're going to move to 100x, and looking at a slide on 100x will require oil. So I only need a small drop of this. Now I don't have to worry about scratching or cracking the slide. And now, really get into focus. I have my handy dandy counter. This already has nicely labeled for me the different white blood cells that I would be seeing. Our segmented or our neutrophils, our lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, or basophils. And as I tap for seeing each one, um, I'm just going to do my scan, and when this reaches 100 in total, it'll do a little ding, and then that's what I know when I've reached my 100, and then I go off the percentage from that for each number. And then here we go. So it's segmented or neutrophil, and then I am just moving in like a zigzag motion. So as I am moving straight line across, um, I will count each one or add it to my little counter here. And then once I get out of my reading zone, like now, then I will move either up or down. And then I'm going back. I'm looking at the platelets as well, and a few other things. Um, and I'm getting a general fill for the entire slide. So this is another white blood cell. And these can get tricky. So I'm looking at if this cell is in like a good state, or if it's been kind of exploded, if it's like from the pressure of making the blood slide, if it got smeared too much. And then also, it's kind of tricky to differentiate between um, some of our white blood cells. So our lymphocytes and monocytes can be a little challenging to differentiate between. We don't want to see a high white blood count um, because that means that they have some infection or something that they are trying to fight off, which is great if they are producing like the white blood cells to do so. But now we have a bigger issue on our hands of, okay, what's going on with this animal?
This is the manual reading of the differential. We do have the ProSight, which gives us its reading as well, but we still like to double check and make sure that we are all, or that we are also seeing what the machine is seeing as well. And so when I'm done, I will compare my numbers to what the machine got and see how close we were. So that looks like a neutrophil. Oh, that was a good segmented or a neutrophil white blood cell. His blood will look okay and the vets will clear him. Um, otherwise, if it looks a little abnormal, then we may have to repeat the blood draw and see if it was like truly abnormal or maybe there were some issues with the collection process. This is actually my favorite thing to do at the lab, is blood analysis. And when we get to our summer season, we're gonna be doing this <laughs> all the time. We process a lot of blood samples because all of our rehab patients are getting bled at least once a week. Um, and if we have like eight sills, that's a lot of blood to be running. Whereas for the most part, our permanent collection, they're generally healthy. So we will only have to do blood on them maybe once every year or even like with some of our birds, we may do it like every other year. One of the favorite things about my job is that you never really know what you're gonna come into on any given day. Um, emergencies happen all the time, whether it be like we have a new rehab patient in or, oh no, one of the birds is out of the habitat and they're just sitting on the ground. We need to intervene. You can see that a little bit better. So that's an eosinophil. Distinguishable by its little pink dots within the cytoplasm. Ooh. And that ding at 100. So now I will write down my numbers. Another thing I'm looking at when I'm looking at the blood slide, as I'm going over various scans and views, I'm wanting to look at the red blood cell morphology. Ideally, they'd all be uniform, about the same shape, same size, but I do note any differences or abnormalities. So now we're done looking at our sample. We've banked any extra um, in case we need it for a research project later on, and I will pass this off to the vet, and that's how we do blood. All right, well, welcome back live to the Sea Life Center. Uh, Pilot's been cruising around. Oh, there he goes, right on cue. <laughs> Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that kind of uh, glimpse behind the scenes. Once again, doing lab work. We're on a lab work kick right now, um, looking at blood work. And we did receive a couple questions, so we'll get to those. But if you have any other questions while we're going through this, feel free to type them in there. We'll try to get to everyone uh, while we're live. But if we don't, if we miss it for some reason, we'll, we'll try to uh, comment on your comment or uh, you know, get back to you however we can. Uh, so it looks like we, we actually received a text of how old is Pilot? How old is Pilot? Pilot is 12 years old, so he'll be 13 this upcoming summer. And maybe as you're watching him cruise behind us, you're like, how much does he weigh? That's a, that's a really good question. He's coming in right at about 1,600 pounds. So he should be putting on some more weight as he gets into his full breeding season um, here in the summertime. That's a, yeah, we are coming into breeding yeah. season. And so, of course, as that happens, with male stellar sea lions, they will increase their weight. They bulk up. Uh, and that's to gain a territory during breeding season. And then to defend that territory, they kind of live off of that bulk as well. So he's going to be getting even bigger than, uh, like you said, about 1,600 pounds right now. He's, he's going to get big. He's so big. <laughs> I think he got, a couple of summers ago, up to what? Um, uh, he's gotten to almost 2,000 pounds. Okay. But uh, it won't, be, it won't you know, be surprising when he gets past 2,000 pounds. Maybe he'll break a ton. Yeah. That would be wild. Okay, so we have another question here. Mm -hmm. Alex. Does it hurt the sea lion taking the blood? Okay, so, you know, we do have to get that blood with a needle, uh, as you saw. And, I mean, no one likes getting stuck with needles, right? I mean, for some people, it's just like, I can't even look at the needle. <laughs> um, so I, I hope everyone was, was all right with watching a uh, pilot get his blood taken. So it does pinch, just like a, a needle in you or I, uh, which, you know, that's why they have him present those fins out. And then Jamie was like, good, you're doing really good. You know, if, if you're going to the hospital, you might know why you're going to the hospital. If, if, you're, you know, if you're getting taken to the hospital by your parents or something, they could probably explain to you, like, oh, you know, they're going to poke you. It's not fun, but it's okay. 
It's really difficult to explain to an animal why they're having something medical done to them. So this is a behavior that gets trained with pilot over and over and over. And it's not that they're taking blood over and over and over, but they'll go through the whole routine. They'll be like, they'll have the people there. They'll be like, all right, pilot, you know, present your, your fins. He'll, he'll kick them out. I love how he just like kicks them out the door. It was um, awesome. And then they'll actually go in there. They'll get the hot water bottle. They'll, they'll kind of like squeeze and then they'll squeeze where they would stick him. Uh, with a needle if they did have to get blood. And that way he is used to the procedure and he knows like, all right, I'm gonna sit here, there's gonna be a little pinch, I'm gonna feel that, but if I stay still, then I get this big old salmon at the end and he just gulps those uh, fish down. So yeah. it, you know, it does pinch just like you or I getting stuck with a needle. And that's something that our team has had to work with him that he expects it, right? We, we don't wanna have him just unexpectedly feel this pinch uh, because it's not pleasant. We can't explain why we need it from him, all we can do is help him understand that it's going to come up and he doesn't have to be afraid of it or like when it's going to happen, he knows. Yeah, they call it desensitizing. Desensitizing. The desensitization so that they are just practicing that. Excellent. Really awesome. Got another question here. It looks like why is the hot water bottle colored uh, or why is the, the hot water bag, I guess they are, uh, right. colored and, and what, what's that colored with? Yeah. Great question. So every time I had heard them say the word hot water bottle, and I was envisioning like a plastic water bottle yeah. from like the grocery store. Um, but yes, good question. It is a just a normal like medical bag and they fill it with water and then they use some sort of dye to make it the red color. Well, it's red because they don't want to accidentally give whatever it could be, just as this is a maybe it's water or whatever. They don't want to accidentally give that to somebody. So they make it super different so that they are able to look in their refrigerator or, or look on their shelves to know that this is what we're pulling. They know what's in there. So yep. if we've got multiple bags of clear fluids, they can dye those yes. so that you know, like, ah, oh, the reds are this, the blues are that, the greens are this. So it's just for identification purposes. Yeah. They heat it up in a microwave before for a couple <laughs> minutes, and then you saw them with the little red and white cooler yeah, that yeah. like, I ha think I have at home. Yeah, a little, little, little cooler, a <laughs> yeah. little travel cooler. We got another one. When you draw blood from a seal or sea lion, are you aiming for a vein, uh, or how, how do you aim the needle? If you're aiming for a vein, how do you see it? So on the sea lions, it's through a vein. Yes. Um, on seals, they actually get it uh, up on their back, I believe, is where it is. And that's because just structurally, they've got little tiny veins in their back flippers, the seals do. The sea lions, they've got these big veins in between their toes. And of course, the toes are webbed. Uh, and so there's that real flat skin. And if you can get him worked up, <laughs> if, if you can get that blood flowing and get him warmed up, those veins pop. They're really, really obvious on those back fins. Uh, which is why they use the hot water. Yep. Uh, and then they also had him do like some, some behaviors right beforehand, basically just getting them all pumped so that those veins would really pop. So on sea lions, yeah, it's, it's just from their back um, fins, their back flippers, and they do uh, go for a vein in between the toes. Um, and then with our birds, they, they actually get that up from in their neck. So each animal here has kind of a different procedure, a different process on how we get the blood. Um, and then as you saw, and it, maybe they talked to you more about it, I, it looked like everyone's blood basically is different. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's all different. Yeah, and you probably also saw Jess in between his digits there, like trying to rub it a little mm -hmm. bit too. And right. she was also taking um, a napkin. It was probably a, a, not a napkin, but trying to get off the oil because sea lions right. have the oil on their flippers. So it made it easier. I've even seen them use headlamps before so that they can actually see better where they're going. Yeah. Um, Cause everyone just kind of hunches over right. it. And so everyone's got shadow there. So the headlamp and you're looking for that shadow of the vein popping up. So that, that was a great question of how do we uh, know where that vein is. Uh, we got another question texted in. What the blood that's left over, because they didn't use all of it, right. what, what do they do with that? Great question. So they actually will save it. Okay. So they made a couple of slides so they can like kind of preserve those slides to perhaps use later if they mm -hmm. needed to analyze it again or, or, or send it off somewhere, perhaps if there's an issue. Um, but also the blood inside of the vials, they'll save that too for research if like later on they need to access it again. Um, so we just will keep that for further veterinary purposes. All right. Well, I'm going to do a little last call on questions here. So if you got any questions, uh, get them in there. But uh, we did get another one. The, um, the little glass tube, they went, what did they stick that in? They stuck it in like it looked like rubber or something. Uh, it's clay. It's clay. Yeah. It's, it's just this, a block it's of the, clay. Yeah, yeah, it's a block of clay. Okay. And they take those tiny hematocrit tubes, which are like this big and mm -hmm. just full glass, and it's basically like sealing it. Okay. They would have to like poke it through yeah. the, in the clay 
and then twist. You saw Ryan twisting it around, okay. and it was sealing it before it goes into the centrifuge. Which let me also tell you, <laughs> the whole time that I was in there and recording with Jess, it was so loud. Which oh. is so like it's great, yeah. <laughs> but it was very loud. Which you probably maybe heard the the centrifuge that was going. That one went for. 10 minutes, the other one went for 10 minutes, but it was a little bit quieter. Yeah. And then the catalyst, which was where they ran the serum, which was that tiny, tiny little vial, which I don't even know how that's enough, but it is. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, the pro site, which was where the blood, the whole blood ran in and it kind of like sh shot back out. Oh yeah, all the all machines. All the machines make all of these like clicking noises. <laughs> like I just, it was awesome. Some of it got picked up. So if you, if you heard even just a little bit of it, like it, it gets loud in that lab. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, you know, you're talking about like all the all the different machines. There was like that little counter, and that, that made like little chunking cool. noises as uh, as Jess was counting everything yeah. that they were seeing on the it slide. It felt like a yeah, I got to touch it a couple of times, yeah. and it felt like a typewriter. Oh, okay. Yeah. And well, I'm waiting for it to ding. It's an exciting <laughs> oh, I did moment. Enjoy. We heard we managed to pick up the ding, so that's pretty fun. It was it was a great time. It looks like we don't have any more questions, and it, like if you know if we sign off and you get one in right at the end, uh, stick around and we'll we'll try to answer that before we really sign off. Uh, but we do want to, of course, thank our sponsors here. Uh, for uh, making these programs, you know, just free. Uh, we can get them out to the public. So that's Royal Caribbean Group sponsoring this season of virtual visits here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. Uh, and I want to thank everyone for joining us for another one. This one was fun because, uh, you know, sometimes I get to go and film these. Sometimes we send, like, Taylor to go and film it. And then I get to see, uh, you know, this little edited clip. And it's really, really fun to, to have a better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes here at the Sea Life Center, what really makes it tick. Uh, and right now we're getting up to a lot of animals breeding season, so everyone's kind of getting all their, their final medical checks in because uh, come breeding season, their minds are going to be elsewhere and they are not going to want to uh, sit still for a blood draw necessarily. <laughs> so we've just been real busy here, and thanks to Taylor for showing Absolutely. us how the uh, blood work is done here. Absolutely. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope we'll see you for more virtual visits in the future. And so long. Bye.